Hello, I'm Ellen Dean and I'm coming to you from Ellen Dean Towers. And today I'd like to talk to you about the sternocleidomastoid muscle. If you saw my first video about anxiety and panic attacks and that sort of thing, you'll have heard me mention it briefly. And it's a little muscle here in the chest, but it runs up the side of your neck. And if you turn your head, you can see this muscle there. And on this side, you can see it there. And it can be a right pain in the neck, this muscle, if it isn't working correctly. Now, if you are the type of person who's had um, a, a whiplash injury, could be 20, 30 years ago, or a head injury, that sort of thing, or if you've pulled your neck, anything like that, it can affect this muscle. Now one of the things I found over the last few weeks is that the symptoms, if you have a, a shortened sternocleidomastoid muscle, symptoms can range from a tension headache, they can range from dizziness, because of course it goes right up here, it can, you can have a pain above any of your, your orbits, eye orbits, or you can have teary eyes, watery eyes, or you can have red eyes, even just one red eye. Now I thought when I had red eye, I was turned into a vampire. <laughs> well, that wasn't the case, fortunately. Although I do like to go out at night, especially on a full moon. Anyway, back to the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle. I love saying that word. Um, another thing, uh, you don't always get pain either. You don't get pain in the muscle. It can be a bit tender or a bit sore but you don't always get pain. Now, a common, another common symptom is having a visual disturbance. Now, for instance, when I was out in our field, I'm pointing at the window because I'm looking out the window at the field. I can be out in the field, and when I turn to look at the house, and I look at the guttering, it sometimes shimmers, sort of does a dance. And I know it's not supposed to, unless you have a rubber uh, gutter and I know we haven't, so it shouldn't do that. Also, especially if I've been ironing or something and, and using, you know, this muscle, then I look at the bookcase and the books are dancing too. And I mentioned it to my optician and she said, oh, that'll be nice for you, having dancing books. She said, I thought that only happened in Harry Potter. But no, it happens at Elendine Towers too, if I've had something going on with this muscle. Now, it might be the cause of your anxiety or panic attacks, it might not. But I would suggest go to your GP and mention it, or your physiotherapist, or a chiropractor. And they can help you sort it out, if it is coming from this muscle. Or there are YouTube videos that show you, and I think I put a link in last time, to a video of this physiotherapist who shows you how to do it. It's only a few minutes job, but I wouldn't show you that because I'm not a professional physiotherapist. And I'm not a professional, uh, I'm not a doctor or anything like that. That's my dog you can hear, <laughs> he's wanting to be in on the action. And uh, sooner or later he might jump up at me, but never mind. Another thing that might cause a problem with this muscle is when you're vacuuming. And I know gentlemen as well as ladies do the vacuum these days. And if you are raising your arms to go around the ceiling to look for cobwebs, then that can stretch that muscle. So just check it out. Computer slouch. When you're working on a computer, you tend to lean forward. And the more you concentrate on something, the more you lean forward. And that shortens that particular muscle so that when you sit up, when you realise what you're doing, you sit up and that makes you want to sit forward again because you're uncomfortable. So fix your slouch. That's one of the best things to do. Now, another thing is texting. Of course, when you're texting somebody, your head's forward like this. We're all going to be walking around like this in the next 10, 15 years. Um, especially teenagers, they're going to wonder why they've got a pain in the neck. Not wonder why they are a pain in the neck, wonder why they've got a pain in the neck. So fix your slouch. Because even sitting watching TV, you can be sat with your head forward. And ladies, when you wear a bra, if it doesn't fit correctly, if you, if you uh, wear a bra that doesn't fit, then that can also shorten your sternocleidomastoid muscle. Anything round your neck, if you feel anything constricting, you know, if, if you've got a problem with that muscle, you can't cope with anything tight like 
a tie for gentlemen or a scarf for ladies. I do like to wear my scarf, but it's only soft and gentle. Then you've got something as crazy as sleeping on your stomach. Now, I always slept on my stomach, always. And I don't now, I changed when I researched this because that makes you go that way or that way and it can cause problems. So sleep on your back or on your side, you'll find it makes a big difference. Another thing is driving. Can you imagine last year when I was joining the A1 motorway, I turned my neck, there was a lot of building work going on on the A1, turned my neck like that to see what was coming and I lost a couple of seconds and I thought god I was going to pass out and there was nowhere to go on the motorway and obviously it wasn't it was because of this muscle so I'm very careful now and it touch wood it's never happened again but when you go to reverse if you you know you turn your head and you go right round like that don't just go like that turn your body because then it won't affect that muscle also your shopping when you go shopping and you pick up the bags make sure that you put the heavy stuff you know a couple of bits of heavy stuff and then light stuff and then when you're carrying your shopping you're balanced you don't want to be like this and you don't want to be like that or even in just one hand you don't want to be walking around like that so that's another thing what else have we got um i think that's about it for today i can't think of anything else that uh, might cause it but you might I mean playing a guitar for instance I'm looking at my guitar here and I'm thinking when I play the guitar if I'm stood up it affects this muscle of course when I'm picking the pony poo I've got to mention that one because I do it every day you bend forward so it affects this muscle and then I end up with palpitations and when I look up the gut is shimmers but if you know what it is and what's causing it then you don't panic that's one of the great things about it you find out what's causing it, sort that problem out, and then you find that everything else seems to fall into place. And you think, ah, well, no, my imagination's not going to run away with me today, even though I'm a creative person. I'm not going to think I'm having a stroke just because my eyes have gone a bit blurred, you know. Um, or I'm not going to have a heart attack just because I've bent over to, to pick the pony poo. Now, I try to do it when I, when I shovel it onto the trailer, I do three shovels that way and then three shovels that way. So you just have to keep a balance with your body. And the reason, when I used to do Tai Chi um, last year, I did it for about six, seven months. And I remember there was one time I turned my head when, you know, we were told to, <laughs> the instructor said, you know, and when I did that, I thought I'd gone all off balance and had to sit down. And when I turned back and I said, oh, a bit faint and she said and she's a physiotherapist our tai chi instructor and it was her that said it'll be that muscle in your neck and that's when i started researching it and thinking hmm, well if it can cause that while i'm doing tai chi then we'll look into you know if it causes anything else so i did and that's what i've come up with now i'm going to leave you for today because i think i might have about 10 minutes here of video and the next video I'd like to talk about colour therapy and how that can help with our moods you know if you're, if you're in a depressive state because some people when they get anxiety and panic attacks it can affect them you know with depression or anything like that so we're going to try a bit of colour therapy for the next video so we'll see you then I'm Ellen Dean signing out bye for now all the best <laughs>